All right, so the last time we talked about XXE, we were able to retrieve the contents of Etsy password, um, and it was actually fairly simple. But this time, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because we're going into this a, a little bit more blind than we were last time, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's pull open one of these files, and uh, we'll do a quick intercept, and we'll just try to check the stock on this umbrella. And when we look at the request, um, this time, it's just calling product ID, store ID, right? It doesn't show any of the actual XML code that was going on like we saw in the last video. So um, what this tells us is they likely are taking whatever we're putting in as a value for product ID, and then they're adding that into some XML code on the, on the server side. So what we need to do is we need to inject our own XML that we want to be parsed on the server inside of this variable here. We can't just add or modify the existing doc type in place. Okay, so to perform this attack, we're actually gonna modify the value here for product ID. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own element called foo, and we'll start at XML namespace that uses xinclude. And the way that xinclude works is by default, it's gonna try to parse the included document as XML, whether or not it's XML code. And since what we're trying to do is call on a, a text file, essentially, the Etsy password file, um, we need to first give xinclude an actual legitimate XML document. So to do that, um, I'm just gonna use this public one that's available on w3.org for uh, xinclude. Cool, so we are telling it to go out and pull down that file. Um, but then this is where what we really wanna do. We want to do another xinclude, and this time we're gonna include and we're gonna parse this file as text. That way we can actually read it and not parse it as XML. And then we're gonna call on uh, the local file Etsy password, if I can spell it. <laughs> All right, Etsy password. And then we'll just close everything out. All right, I think this will do the trick. Um, let's go ahead and just forward this request off. And uh, actually, I'm gonna send it to repeater so we can analyze the response and let's see what happens. Bam, check it out, we got it to pop. So we, of course, return invalid product ID, right? Because obviously that's not a legitimate ID, but check it out. We were able to actually get um, that remote file to show for us. And now we've got a list of all the users on the system. Great. Well, thanks for following along, guys. If you like this content, please do hit the like button. Consider subscribing because I'm going to be going through all of the different labs here on the Port Swigger Academy, at least for XXE. And uh, yeah, there's, there's more to come. Thank you so much.